Europe's monarchs usually have more pomp than power. The political duties of the Belgian king, Albert II, typically end at swearing in a new government. But with warring parties unable to form a coalition, the king has had to step in. This week, he asked the caretaker prime minister, Yves Le Terme, to hash out a lean new budget. Uh, we've seen that since the uh, beginning of the crisis, political crisis in June 2010, um, the spread um, with uh, the German bonds has increased by 60 uh, points. Uh, knowing that we have to refinance our debt by $50 billion in 2011, that means a cost, an extra cost of $300 million uh, alone. That's a lot of money for a small country like Belgium. Belgium hasn't had a government for a record 212 days. That's making markets wonder they can shave their 4.6% deficit down to size. It's a problem of language and wealth. The country is split between the rich Flemish North and the poor French-speaking South. Belgium is home to European Union institutions, but the town of Linkbeck doesn't feel like a bastion of unity. Dutch is the official language here, but most of the residents speak French. That's caused problems for the francophone mayor. He was elected in 2006, but hasn't been officially installed due to a language dispute. I think above all that Flanders, the northern part of the country, currently has economic superiority. And Flanders believes that, being more prosperous, some money is transferred from north to south to help the south along. And Flanders doesn't want this to happen anymore. Belgium has made progress in chopping its deficit. But disunity at the heart of the continent isn't doing much to boost confidence in the European project. Nicole Itano, Bloomberg.